of the three qualities we bring to meditation practice, mindfulness, alertness, and ardency. Alertness is the one that's most exclusively concerned with the present moment. Mindfulness brings our memories of the past that are useful for what we're doing to bear on the present. And ardency tries to shape the present with an eye also to the future. So we get good results both in the present and in the future. Whereas ardency is aware of what you're doing right now and the results you're actually getting. Now notice it's not simply aware of the present in a very general way. It's very focused and it's where it places most of its attention, i.e. your actions. You see this all the way through the practice. When the Buddha was introducing the practice to his son Rahula, he started out by saying, you've got to be truthful, and then told him to be observant, specifically to be observant of his intentions and his actions as he was doing them. The truthfulness, of course, underlies all this, because if you're not truthful about what you're doing, you're never going to see anything, you're never going to gain anything from the practice, or maybe a few things, but not much. You have to be truthful about what your actions are and what your intentions are right now, so you can learn from them. Because if you see that they bring about bad results, then you, can, you know what to change. If you're hiding your actions from yourself, then you look at the results and you have no idea where they came from, or you don't admit to yourself where they came from. And that cuts off the practice right there. So you've got to be truthful. What are you actually doing? What are the actual results? For rule of this, in the instructions were before you do anything, ask yourself what your intentions are, what you expect the results of the action to be. If there's going to be any harm, you don't do it. If you don't foresee any harm, you go ahead and do it. While you're doing it, see if any harm comes up. If you notice any harm is coming up, you stop. Otherwise, you can continue with the action. And then when the action is done, you, ref you look at the actual results that came out over time. This is all a function of alertness. Now then the mindfulness and ardency come in. Ardency tells you, I don't want to make that mistake again. Mindfulness helps you remember what you did. Then you go talk it over with someone else who's more advanced in the path, so you can get some ideas of what some other alternatives might be. Then you remember that. So even right there in the beginning, the Buddha is giving verbal instructions in mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, and specifically what you're aware of in the present moment. It's what you're doing. Always keep in mind, that's the bottom line. What are you doing right now? Even when you seem to be passive and just taking in sensory input. To what extent is the mind really passive? Is it just sitting there with images coming into the brain and you're not interpreting them? You're not focusing your attention here as opposed to there? You're doing things. You're commenting on them. You're highlighting some things and pushing other things into the background. Simply in looking at things, listening to things. Your engagement with the senses is a two-way street. Input is coming in, but also your shaping of that input is going out, and you want to see that, because otherwise you can go through the day and you're picking up little bits of lust, say, you're picking up little bits of anger without realizing it, if you're not careful and alert to what you're doing right now. And all of a sudden you find it flaring up in the mind. You don't know where it came from. Well, you've been gathering these things all along. So to be on top of the situation, you've got to keep in mind, okay, what am I doing right now? That's that focused kind of awareness that makes us into alertness. You'll notice that when the Buddha talks about being in the present moment, being alert to what's going on, or seeing clearly what's go going on in the present moment, it's always a matter of actions, and it's always in the context of not that it's a wonderful place to be or whatever. It's simply that 
there's work that has to be done right here, right now, and if you don't do it right here, right now, it's not going to get done, because death could come at any time. It's always with a shadow of death, the Buddhist teachings in the present moment. So under the shadow of death, what should you be doing right now? What's the most skillful thing? Frittering away your day? Building up defilements? Or is there a better choice? The Buddha said, if you're heedful, then you say, I've got this breath, let's practice with this breath. Because you know you've got this breath. You don't know about the next breath. But you do know that you've got this breath, so do it now. Do what is skillful now. Conscious that it's, you're not just watching a TV show here and you're not totally passive. It's more like an interactive game. You've got some input, and it turns out that you actually have more input in this than you do in an interactive game. You're shaping all kinds of things here. And that because the mind has been doing this so long, that you stop noticing it. So try to back up a bit. Be alert to what you're doing and the results, what you're getting from your actions. That's the focus right now. As we're meditating, it's the same sort of thing. What you're doing right now is the direct of thought and the evaluation. You use those to shape the breath, shape your experience of the breath. And if you shape it well, then there's going to be a sense of ease and well-being, a sense of rapture. The mind can settle down. You're doing something here. Now, there are cases where you simply drop your affairs of the day, and the mind seems to settle in with no apparent action on, on your part. That's simply because the conditions have been right. But to stay there, you've got to maintain it. This perspective is especially important in two ways. One is when the meditation is not going well. You know where to look. What am I doing right now? Now, there's some cases where you're running up against obstacles that come from your past actions, but a large part of the skill in the meditation is learning how to work around those. Say there's a pain in the body that came from your overworking it today. Okay, you may have to sit with the pain for a while, but you don't have to be pained by it. And you can work around it with the breath. You can work around it with the way you picture the pain to yourself, the way you picture the breath to yourself. There's lots of things you can do right now. The other time when this is a useful perspective it has is when you're moving from one stage of concentration to another. Often this will happen without you realizing what you're doing. The mind just settles in, settles in, settles in. You come out and you say, that was deeper than it was before. You want to stop and think, okay, what was I not doing? What did I stop doing? So you can get a sense of how you do it the next time. For developing discernment, it's the same sort of thing. This question of what am I doing right now is the question that underlies the Four Noble Truths. You're doing something right now that's causing stress. Look for it. When you have something really big in the meditation, say a sense of just knowing, 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 always keep that question in mind. What am I doing right now in the knowing? And if it seems like you're not doing anything, we'll just look really, really carefully. This is one area where people tend to trip up a lot. They get to the sense of knowing, and they say, well, this is just the basis of everything. There's some sort of deep cosmic principle here, a deep psychological principle here going on. You run into the underlying knowing of all things. That's because you pose the wrong questions. If you pose the right questions, the question always is, what am I doing right now? What's maintaining this? You'd learn to see that even that knowing has some fabrication going on. That's how you learn how not to get stuck on things. Always look for that question, what am I doing right now? 
how can I change? The alertness that lets you know what you're doing gives information that, that your ardency is going to need to use. How do I do this better? And then you try, use your mindfulness to try to remember what did I do in the past that worked. And if you can't think of anything, well, look very carefully. Try a few things. It's the interplay among these three qualities that allows your meditation to develop. The alertness is what keeps you focused on the right things in the present moment, so you know what to deal with, where the big issues are, where the solutions are going to lie. So as you're in the present moment, don't just be in the present moment. Be focused. Be alert here to what you're doing, and you'll be at the right place.